announcement in about an hour. Bob, what's going on? Yeah, Patrice, we're better placed in the Heinz History Center for a historic day like this. And this is where the press conference will take place. Mayor uh, Ravenstall expected to be here along with Dan Honorado, Ed Rendell, and of course Mario Lemieux, Ron Burkle, two Penguin co-owners expected to be here. But as we said last night to you, first at 11 o'clock, Penguins had reached agreement with state and local officials on the construction of a new multi-purpose arena that should keep the Penguins here for at least the next 30 years. Great news for hockey fans. The framework of this deal was actually accomplished last Thursday in Philadelphia. That four hours of meeting over there got a lot accomplished. Significant progress was reported. And then my sources tell me everything really got finalized as the two sides went back and forth for the next couple of days. Sunday night was the night everything got done. Now this new arena is expected to be in use, in operation for the 2009-2010 hockey season. That means the Bengals will skate in Mellon Arena for the next two years before that place is eventually imploded. But as Badger Bob Johnson, the late coach of the Penguins, once said, this is a great day for hockey. Malkin fakes the shot, lets it go, he scores! This deal means the Penguins will only be skating in Mellon Arena for the next two seasons. By the time the 09-2010 season rolls around, a brand new arena will be ready for play. Here's a rendering of what it's expected to look like. It'll be located across Center Avenue from Mellon Arena, right behind historic Epiphany Church. The arena will be a $290 million state-of-the-art facility. Under terms of the deal, the Penguins are going to pay $3.8 million a year toward construction, another $400,000 a year for capital improvements. Governor Ed Rendell talked about the deal this morning at a meeting in Harrisburg. This afternoon, I'm flying out to Pittsburgh, where I'll be with the mayor and the county executive and uh, the owners of the Penguins and Commissioner Bettman from the NHL. And we will announce that uh, the... the all three governmental entities have reached an agreement for a deal that will keep the Penguins in Pittsburgh for the next 30 years. Well, that was great news here this morning. Of course, we knew it last night. We told you about that. Some of the other things that had to be worked out, the Penguins and the state have agreed to split any cost of additional overruns up to $310 million. So that would take care of $20 million in overruns. The team will also get all revenue from the arena. They will also pay the operational costs on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's great news, and we will have certainly more coming up later in this hour. John Steyerwald spoke to Penguin players, you know, who really didn't know what their future was going to be. So now I imagine the uh, housing market in Pittsburgh will get a little spike because those players will look for some houses. We'll have much more coming up. This is Bob Pompiani live at the Heinz History Center. Back to you in the studio. All right. We thank you, Bob. Now, this has been a long and drawn out process uh, getting to this point for both sides to reach an agreement on a new deal. Several times the team threatened to move out of town. Andy Sheehan continues our live team coverage now with a look inside these negotiations. Andy? Well, Stacy, it's basically been a seven-year soap opera and an emotional roller coaster for Penguin fans, but as Shakespeare said, all's well that ends well. Shoots the puck and scores! The seesaw negotiations between the Penguins and the government officials finally reached a breakthrough last week during a four-hour meeting in Philadelphia. After a week that had started with the Pens declaring impasse and threatening to move out of town, the governor's press spokesman said the meeting had turned things around. We had a very constructive meeting where significant progress was made. The two sides left Philadelphia with pretty much the framework of a deal. And although another meeting had been scheduled for tomorrow, they were able to work out the final details in the past few days. Those included defining a split in the revenues from a new building and the closing of a $20 million gap for the financing of it. In the end, the Penguins will pay $4 million a year on the bonds for the construction of a new arena and $500,000 a year for a new parking garage. But on the public side, Governor Rendell said the deal wouldn't have gotten done without $210 million from Don Barden's Majestic Star Casino. And Mayor Ravenstall said it was all a tribute to the perseverance of all involved. Myself, the county executive, the governor, and certainly our staffs, uh, the staff of the SCA, were all very instrumental in making this deal happen. Uh, it's just so exciting. Uh, it's a hockey night in Pittsburgh for the next 30 years. Couldn't be happier. It's all blessed relief for Jim Gardner and especially his son, Jacob. I was worried, but now I'm really happy. But in the end, the two sides were able to close this $20 million funding gap. But perhaps more importantly, they were able to end the adversarial tone that had so plagued these negotiations and begin to work together. Reporting live in the Strip District, Andy Sheehan, KDKA TV News.
Thank you, Andy. And while fans have been anxiously awaiting for word of an arena deal, the Pens have not disappointed on the ice. They have given fans much more to cheer about. John Shumway is live outside the arena with their reaction to the news. John? Yeah, Patrice, it'll be interesting tonight to see whether or not that adversarial tone that has been created between the fans and the public officials is gone now that there is an agreement. And the fans will come here tonight to see the Penguins play the Buffalo Sabres. There have been fans who have been drifting through here throughout the day. Uh, a couple of them asked me, where's the new place? Place going to be well let me show you the arena is behind me obviously it's going to be obsolete where they're going to build this you heard bob say right across uh center avenue that's the old uh st francis medical center it will go the parking garage will go and basically everything on that side of center avenue will become the new arena and for hockey fans it means many more nights as the mayor said of hockey nights in pittsburgh well my husband loves hockey i love hockey i didn't know i loved hockey um, being from Cleveland, <laughs> but we've been coming to a few games and we're going to get season tickets next year. They're totally fun to watch. Why are they so important in Pittsburgh? Morale. Because Pittsburgh was doing so bad, so this makes us happy now to do this thing. The Armstrong shoots the puck, score! Just the money they bring in. If you see like today, there would be nobody down in the city after 5 o'clock. It'd be like a ghost town, but you come in in the winter and you got the penguins and you're spending money and the city's alive with just atmosphere and it's a great experience for anybody that ever comes into the city and anybody that looks at the city. Yeah, a point echoed by Kevin Joyce, the president of the Restaurant Association in uh, Pennsylvania, who, of course, runs the Carlton here in Pittsburgh. These hockey nights are huge for downtown businesses, and so there's got to be a sigh of relief within the business community itself. We're going to be here as the fans arrive for tonight's game and as the announcement is made down at the History Center, and we'll have it all for you as the afternoon progresses. Live at the Mellon Arena, John Shumway, KDK TV News. All right, John, thank you. Now, no doubt, Pittsburgh has the best fans. We all know that players know it as well many of the season's games have already been sellouts so how do the players feel about staying in town now john steigerwald will have their reaction coming